Hi, my name is Boris Schengler. I work at Flagware. Uh, I've been making the... No, no, the mic is fine. I think here is better. Here. Closer? No, you, you. That microphone will pick my voice up even from the other old <laughs> I work at Lockware. Uh I have been making VMs for small token for Java and other languages since I can remember myself programming. And uh, uh, one thing that has been torturing me for many years now is that this thing that, that people have about small talk being in this last carriage of the train of the computer industry. So people go forward doing their things and we're always catching up. And uh, when I uh, was talking to the uh, program chair at ESA uh, a few years ago, and he told me, yeah, well, IWSD is really the only appropriate venue for uh, what you're doing, because if you talk to any of the big guys, like uh, DLDI or, or DLS or something like that, they're going to say, as soon as they hear small talk, they will go, ah, small talk, and... Right. So, okay. My job at Flopware is to erase this and uh, uh, make it like this picture. So, what is the problem? Uh, why are we not here yet? So, part of the problem is complacency. So, if this plane is the plane, uh, is the space of possible design. So, small talk or small talk eighty, I should say, small talk eighty, is a very nice thing to be. So people don't want to think about what is outside because, well, it is a very nice thing to be. It is true, but this is not the whole truth because what customers are worried about the problems that they're trying to solve, the interesting projects, uh, they are in a space which is way out here. And if you look at the scale of how big this space is, then this is very small and, and they don't see it. So what is, what is this interesting stuff or important stuff that, that the people uh, who are this train, and, and specifically I'm talking about the open source uh, programming community. Uh, what are these things that they're, they're looking for? And uh, there are things like uh, worrying about energy. If you show them the normal classical GC algorithm, and they will say, oh, uh, but this is still assuming that memory is magnetic core memory. Well, that's going to eat your battery in five minutes because you have to refresh all the garbage. Uh, another uh, uh, thing is, is openness and cross-platformness, cross-CPU, uh, cross cross-OS, so open and cross-platform. Uh, security has done so huge a concern that now these front carriages uh, they demand on a massive scale uh, demand uh, formal proof of security and of, cor of correctness and of security formal proof so what happens is that uh, back in uh, 1990 when I just started doing this thing uh, my first uh, encounter with programming was uh, at uh, the Stevenson Nuclear Physics Institute, and we were doing a 
device for uh, cardiovascular surgery. And the team, uh, their background was uh, nuclear safety. So when you are uh, in that sort of mentality and talking to that sort of customers, if you just uh, do normal C, C++ style of hand waving why this code is, you know, should work, uh, that kind of customers will not even start meet with you to, to talk to you. Because if you're saying, well, okay, if, if, it's, if we're not exactly right, we're going to find the bug and we will fix it. Well, if the cost of the bug is uh, the lives of 7 billion people on the planet, then obviously this approach does not fly. Uh, and uh, back then it was a very narrow and uh, specialized niche market for that kind of software. But now with concerns, you know, like spectrum meltdown bugs and all of us being dependent on computers, uh, it is a universal uh, requirement that if you talk about uh, a company who is working on a new ISA architecture, uh, the first question they're, they're going to ask you, for example, to, 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 to risk five vendors, if you, if you ask them, you know, people like AMD or, or uh, people like NXP, uh, the first question they, they ask you is, okay, well, show me uh, how you do the, the, the formal proof of correctness of your tool chain. Uh, now, I have, how we do this, I've done a number of talks before, and, and this is, in this talk I'm going to be a bit unlike myself, that instead of explaining how my stuff works, I'm going to be talking about the impact and how it has been uh, accepted in the wider community and uh, how it has helped us move small talk, well maybe not exactly here already, but uh, I will show you some significant pro uh, progress that happened since we met 12 months ago uh, in La Plata. And uh, uh, one of the one, one of the important pieces is that we are uh, in the RISC-5 space. We have made uh, serious inroads. So let me uh, talk a little bit first as, as a background what it is uh, RISC-5. So, so the evolution of these RISC uh, projects, they, they were projects at the University of California in Berkeley, uh, led uh, by people like Dave Patterson, uh, and uh, the first, uh, so there are five generations of chips. So risk, risk one was 1981, and uh, risk two was similar, an evolution of that in 1983. And what they are, they are extremely simple. Um, like ridiculously simple instruction sets with uh, only three instruction formats and only one addressing mode and like 20 instructions all together um, and uh, they uh, have amazing performance despite not providing support for much, for much in, in the assembly, at the assembly level uh, and what is interesting is so this is first generation. Uh, this is first generation. This is second generation. This is, is, is risk free. The third generation called Project Soar. Nineteen eighty-four uh, by Dave Under and Dave Patterson. Soar stands for Small Talk on a Risk. It was uh, an accelerated, a hardware accelerated small talk chip. Uh, they uh, did things like they noticed that uh, what makes small talk slow is that uh, instead of spending useful time in execution of method, we spend most of the time in sense. Uh, if, if, if we look up, or look up is slow, and, and if, there are, if, if there are inline caches, the, the, the sense is still pretty expensive. So SOAR was a chip with uh, actual hardware to perform uh, a send in hardware in one cycle. So this was um, 
which was 84. And uh, the next uh, generation uh, of, of the RISC project was uh, uh, RISC 4 is this spur uh, parallel, um, symbolic parallel uh, of under RISC or something like that. And this was a LISP uh, machine. Uh, with uh, many processors running in parallel. So they, they were very interested in sustaining in, uh, in, in, uh, What they mainly focused was on things like parallel uh, garbage collection and what happens if the garbage collector is accessing the same set as the container is creating a new object and, and building a frame during the trying to ascend and, and, and things like that. Uh, and uh, so this is, and then the fifth generation, this is today, is RISC-5. Uh, this is a fully open source instruction set with many open source actual implementations uh, that shares the, attribute, uh, the interesting attributes of, of the first original business and of, of, of all its predecessors that has learned from all the mistakes. Uh, and uh, it was originally a teaching and research project at Berkeley. Uh, and many people looked at it pretty much in the same way as people looked at uh, Linux in its early days. That, ah, oh, these are students and other you know, kids who don't really, uh, who cannot really program for, for a given. Uh, so let them play their toys, but we have serious business here. Uh, and then after a few years, okay, well, all the business has gone that way. Uh, RISC V is past that point where people who are running quote unquote, serious business recognize its value. So the biggest players uh, in semiconductors uh, and in software, they are uh, on the RISC V uh, wagon. So it is pretty safe to say that, that this architecture has won. It was not only, I mean, sure, uh, semiconductor companies like NXP, uh, they are quite huge to, to make a big impact. Uh, when Western Digital uh, one year ago announces that, okay, well, we are the biggest uh, ARM processor vendor on the planet, uh, we are ditching the ARM and we're going into full day at risk five with the goal to uh, reduce the production of ARM to zero chips per year in, uh, you know, before 2020. Uh, it, it kind of tells you something, but when the biggest uh, Intel compatible uh, vendors like AMD announces that they're, they're exiting the uh, Intel compatible business and then pull goes with this bike, and well, Intel themselves made a major investment into the Respite Foundation, uh, that is really telling you uh, something. Uh, so, what is this? So, it is uh, a ridiculously simple <coughs> instruction set. Uh, the version one of the ISA manual is 28 pages, compared to 6,000 pages for ARM. Uh, it is modular, so it has a base ISA that has only things like you know five uh, arithmetic and logical and shift. Uh, instructions and it has an instruction for store, an instruction for load, and uh, that's pretty much it, and three instructions for uh, four months. And then there are modules to that architecture. There are, there are uh, they call it extensions, but they're not, you know, something that any vendor can, uh, uh, can do in whichever way they want. Uh, they are uh, standardized, so when we're talking about bit manipulation, with, uh, you know, shifts, rotates, and so on. That is an extension, but it is standardized, and the standard is ratified by the, by the RISC Foundation, and uh, after it is ratified, it is 
frozen, and then all vendors have to appear to that specification. And they have these modules or extensions uh, for uh, crypto, they have for vector, they have for you name it, all, all, all kinds of things. So it's an extensible uh, architecture. And one of these modules or extensions is uh, the small talk module or well, called uh, the JIT extension, or J extension for short. Uh, for, for short. Uh, and uh, people uh, on that uh, subcommittee who are making that standard, uh, they are small talkers. They, 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 these are uh, Michael Holchko, uh, JSL Lasulta of uh, uh, Squeak, uh, myself, and uh, a bunch of other poor small talkers who have been doing uh, small talk VMs for their whole lives. Uh, so it is, it is uh, quite sure now that if a major vendor tries to implement a risk five chip, they are talking to the committee making sure that small talk or whatever dynamic language on whichever VM we consider for, for the extension does not suck on their processor. Uh, so how do we actually make it real? And why is it that things like formal proof are possible? Well, the approach that these guys have taken is that they, uh, they say, okay, uh, there is no such thing as the manual. The manual uh, is just an illustrative thing. The normative thing is the formal spec of, of RISC-5. RISC-5 formal spec. <coughs> so, and what they do now is they synthesize the actual silicon from the formal spec, and then they do formal verification that the silicon is adherent to the spec. So when I'm writing these arrows, I'm writing them like this. So this line is synthesis, synthesis and uh, this dotted line is verified in formal way. Verify. Uh, and then, uh, uh, the, your compiler in a static sense, or the compiler, and the OS kernel. They're all the same. And my small talk, or whatever, the, the VM for dynamic languages. And it doesn't matter whether it is Java or small talk or Ruby or what, for reasons that I will explain in a bit. It is the same. So there is no such thing as a compiler bug, or a spec bug, or a silicon bug. So let's say uh, you have a bug in a traditional sense, and the manual says, well, there's an instruction for shift left. But in reality, it's a shift right, and your silicon has implemented a shift right. But because they are, they are all coming from the same spec that has the bug, there is no way for, that, for, for all of these pieces to converge. So the compiler is going to be producing code already uh, taken account that in reality this is shift right and not shift left. So you just cannot have that, 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 that kind of, of uh, class of bugs. So uh, how do we do this in, in small talk? I will just, uh, I will just quickly uh, Go over this just just to remind uh, whoever whoever doesn't know uh, because I have uh, shown this uh, a number of times before, but just just for people who so we start with 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 a spec. This is not the blue spec which is currently at the RISC foundation. This is another Berkeley variant of the <coughs> specs. But uh, as you can see, you you, you have things like which uh, instructions correspond to which, uh, to which type, and then, uh, um, yeah, they, they, this is just uh, instructions, and uh, go a little bit uh, 
so, so this is the actual binary encoding of which instruction type. And uh, then uh, you have things like the actual the actual encoding. So the, the opcode of the JLRR instruction is it has the opcode field equal to 67 and the function 3-bit subfield, the minor opcode is 0 and so on. So you take this, we parse that uh, in small talk using uh, the, the PT parser and uh, then we spit out something like uh, but this, that to obtain a certain I.O. effect, like a transfer from a half word to a GPR, uh, it suffices to, to, to have that instruction. If the number of bits that are encoded in the, in the immediate uh, field of the instruction is less than 16, uh, because this is risk where we don't have variable instruction lengths. So we take that, and then we uh, feed that to something that we call the pig, and uh, that uh, is happening using a uh, rewriting engine, which is built over a unification uh, engine, which is, uh, for now we are using Prolog, and that's that, that, that's uh, the classical uh, Parker uh, algorithm. You only need like five lines of code. Uh, to implement the whole of it right there. And uh, what we do is then, is then there are outputs. And the outputs could be uh, something like um, something like this, something like this. If we are a, a B programmer, where is my, why is this not? Anyway, uh, uh, I, I get it protected. Uh, it's uh, you, you are you are synthesizing from the pig. You are synthesizing uh, uh, basically the assembler of B. Uh, or you can go and uh, end up with with uh, something like this. This is uh, part of uh, the OMR uh, runtime uh, and. Uh, you just synthesize, uh, 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 and, and these are, uh, this is what we were just looking about, uh, right? So the, these are the instruction encodings, and it takes the major of <coughs> the minor of codes, and then it pushes it uh, to the table of codes, and then uh, for instruction selection, it uh, takes from the table of actual effects, it synthesizes the, the process that uh, to instruction selection, and so on. And uh, uh, you can do it for any small talk or for any PM. Uh, so what is, what, what is the impact uh, of all this? Like, like this, this, is, this is how it works. So what is the impact and, and, uh, and acceptance? Uh, somewhat the recurring patterns that, uh, that I see in the last year, uh, for example, um, Jan was just talking about, about his, his DDD debugger, and uh, uh, pieces of, uh, useful improvements are uh, going uh, into uh, the world's <coughs> most important debugger, the GDB. So, so we are starting to, to actually drive the open source trade. And something that happens with this uh, is that uh, we uh, pieces of this are getting into things like uh, Gem5, uh, into, OMR, into Eclipse OMR, into Eclipse Open J9. Well, with Gem5, it's, 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 kind of, it's kind of interesting. I can get my mouse from something here and show you this. Ah, uh, yeah, if we don't have uh, time. So uh, this is the, the header of uh, one of the files in uh, Gem5. This is the remote uh, GDB uh, server that I've 
implemented for, for a number of process, uh, for a number of processors. And what's interesting is that after uh, we bought the pieces of Loveware's uh, VM uh, used in here, uh, I said, okay, well, now I want to do the same thing for RISC-5, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a similar modification uh, to uh, uh, GEM5, and uh, I will be able to debug my uh, small top VM on RISC-5. Well, guess what? Uh, I went there, and uh, this guy already, who, who is interested in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in simulation of, of RISC-5, already took my stuff and already did all the working. So the loop uh, between the small talk uh, world and the larger uh, open source uh, world is already closed in both directions. We are giving them our patches. They are returning their patches to be useful in the small talk VM. Uh, yes, the last thing that remains before I think we have a couple of minutes uh, is uh, this dotted line. So this is this is a static uh, verifier. What it looks like. This, this is implemented in, in the COG uh, proof of systems. This is, this is part. Of, this is not our stuff. This is uh, part of the COG cert, uh, certified compiler. And this is static verification of things. But uh, what we need, and, and what I would like anybody in this audience to jump on this, because it is very, very juicy, low hanging fruit, is that we start implementing. Uh, this uh, highly critical, um, uh, these approaches for creating highly critical uh, software that we start implementing these pieces in small talk itself, uh, in, as opposed to relying to an external tool like that. Because as Tudor said, you know, as soon as you're outside of small talk, you are dead, you're not alive. And what is interesting is that if we start implementing these this things, we need uh, a Martin Loff engine. On top of that, it's very easy to implement uh, categories. And on top of that, as, as soon as you have categories, it's, it's basically you have a proof of program behavior <coughs> essentially for free uh, on top of that. Uh, and uh, when we have that in small talk, it is very interesting because that sees the program as a theorem and its correctness is, is something that is theorem to be proved. Uh, but if we have that in small talk, then it is a dynamic system, which is live, which is capable of looking at itself, but it looks at itself uh, as uh, a leading theorem to be proven. So it, it, it's, a, it's a live system that on the fly proves its own correctness. So, um, This is basically all the different topics that uh, I wanted to show you that they exist. Maybe this is not very coherent, uh, one line of, of thought. Uh, but if you have any questions, I, I think we still have some, yeah, some time. Yes. One thing I have is, uh, so these uh, formal proof. Yes. I'm going to learn what kind of things you want to prove. Uh, like, uh, for instance, could, could, uh, I need an example. I, I want to prove, for example, this, right? This is, this is the, the, the for, this is a formal statement of what each uh, assembler instruction does. So, uh, if I have a formal statement of what the bytecodes must do, what kind of effects, and, and I am uh, jitting the code on the fly, I want to verify that the actual, uh, I want to formally prove, as with mathematical certainty, that uh, uh, the code that my, uh, I don't know, Pochos class assembler is, is emitting is when it will be run, when, uh, uh, when we jump to it uh, at the next instruction, that what it will do is exactly what the formal specification of the bytecode semantics says it should do. Okay, and that would be enough, or is there is something else you have to prove uh, for me. Uh, I need to prove uh, the correctness of my uh, garbage collector. 
I need to prove uh, the correctness of uh, how the garbage collector uh, uh, interacts with the mutator. Uh, I have to prove the correctness of my FFI, which is one of the most trickiest parts because I'm talking to the outside world where I don't know what the hell is, or what kind of bears are, are hiding there. Uh, yeah, the distance. I have one more question. You say that the major chip manufacturers are moving toward racing. So that's a general purpose platform or what? Uh, it, it is uh, expanding. Uh, the first RISC-V chips, the, the, the ones that are in production now already, uh, those are mainly embedded in the embedded space. For example, uh, Western Digital, which uh, now contains uh, SunDisk inside them uh, after the merger, uh, they use them in the hard drive and the flash memory controllers. Uh, uh, but this is expanding, so this is quickly expanding into the server uh, space, this is uh, quickly expanding into the desktop space, this is expanding into the supercomputer space, uh, it uh, is uh, becoming, uh, you know, all across the board from the from the tiniest chips to the biggest uh, uh, complexes. Uh, uh, the open standard for uh, uh, proceeding.